The energy of death smothers this place like a suffocating burial shroud. So many have died here, alone, forgotten, screaming their last to an uncaring sky as their life is taken for some blasphemous ritual. Blood has stained the rock, a deep, rich crimson over countless years of slaughter, giving the skulls carved into the stone a truly fiendish appearance as their deathless eyes watch your ascent. Hollow eyes set in yellow, splintering bone watch as you approach the steps of the ritual site. Clad in rusted and rotting scraps of the armor, the deathless warriors raise their ancient weapons, ready to defend their master. Two figures stand on the slope of a hill. Giants clad in rusted armor, the color of old blood. Their carrion stink hot on the wind. Motes of unholy light glow in the depths of their helmets, burning with an otherworldly malice. They wield huge axes, spattered in gore with horrifying ease as they prepare to defend their villainous master. Bathed in pallid green witch light, the figure stands beneath a pulsing crystal, the hollows of a desiccated flesh cast in horrifying relief. Clad in moldering robes, covered in grave dirt, their voice carries a fell wind as they recite the incantation, weaving foul magics in arcs of green and red lightning. They summon a palpable aura of death and despair. Striking down the last of your foes, you turn your attention to the summit of the cursed hill. Silhouetted against a roiling crimson sky, untamed lightning arcing in all directions, the crystal hovers bound by thick iron chains, cradled in the grasp of an enormous fiendish claws hewn from the blighted rock. The plateau is a grisly scene. Skulls litter the gore-covered earth of a ritual site, and an overwhelming aura of sorrow, rage, and loss assaults your senses as you make your way towards your goal. Hey folks, my name is Leif and I want to welcome you so much to my YouTube channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint miniatures or craft terrain for the tabletop. Now one might think that I, a simple barbarian from the north, have mastered the English vocabulary and now am a flawless storyteller. Why yeah, no, I remain a humble barbarian. but. I was lucky enough to be contacted by the good folks over at Describe, which sort of directly inspired today's project. Describe is a huge database with over 4,500 descriptions of monsters, places and locations, spells, perfect for you to insert into your campaign and inspire your players, kind of like I just did. Now the great thing is, you can save $5 from your first subscription payment, simply by using the code devs and dice. Check it out, I really loved it and it's quite inspiring just to click around and find different descriptions, but I digress. Let's have a look at what went into creating this mountain of despair. Now a while back I bought a whole lot of these skulls and I bought them on internet order and the same with two pair of creepy hands. Apparently you're supposed to have them in the book and it will look like somebody got smashed inside the book. I think I found a better use. See, I had this vision of a, some sort of evil tower where two hands would be grasping towards the sky. But my first problem was that the hands were, of course, only right-handed. So I decided to just cut off the fingers and, as good as I could, mimic a left hand. The good thing is that none of these hands have fingerprints, so you can't really tell that they're actually two right hands. At least I don't think so. This project is also very good for someone like me who has a whole lot of scrap XPS foam that they want to use. 
As you can see, I built up that mound or hill slice by slice using different kinds of XPS foam. I created a base using hardboard and I cut up all of these skulls. And believe me, there's going to be plenty of skulls. Once I got the terrain piece glued down to the base, it was time to start looking at the larger skulls. But first I felt like I needed to add a little bit more terrain. And here I'm really thinking about the gameplay aspect of it. You can see that I've sort of made several plateaus because I want it to be sort of a upwards hill battle where enemies can be standing in many places. Now a while back I also bought some sculpt mold and I have a whole bunch left so I figured I would use this to fill out the rocks and sort of blend the seams between the plastic skulls and the XPS foam. I used a knife to create those striations that are so characteristic for this kind of layered rock. Now in order to come in with another layer of texture, I'm coming in with some paste from Vallejo. And once that has dried, it's a fairly easy thing just to get the whole terrain piece primed. After that, I come in with some ink and do a zenithal highlighting. After that, I'm going to come in with various kinds of brown inks. And here I'm really starting to sketch in my mind's eye where it's going to be brown and where it's going to be a little bit more green. The irony of this is that we're going to cover about, I don't know, 80% of this using some dry brushing. Here I'm going from gray up to a lighter gray. And as I work my way through it, you can really start to see that it stops being a brown uh, piece of thing. And and it starts to look like a mountain. Then I come in with my homemade wash and a final dry brush after the wash has dried. So at this point, I felt a little bit lost. I wasn't exactly sure what the next steps would be. Thankfully, I came up with a pretty good solution. I know. What if I call Luke from Geek Gaming Scenics? <laughs> But what am I waiting for? Chop, chop, boyo! How do I? What do you want? Hey, Luke! I'm making a mountain. Like, like what? Like a tundra mountain? Think more, he man. Ah, oh, skull mountain, like eighty style. Yes, exactly. Nice. Ah, um, uh, thanks. I'd add some bushes, like some brambles and stuff. Brambles. Some tufts. You know what I mean? Do you mean shrubbery? Yeah, yeah, just like that. I can do that. And flock it to death. Do what? Literally, flock it to death, mate. Are you sure? More textures and colours, as much as you can get into it, make it look as realistic as possible. Okay, if yeah, you yeah. say so. All right then, man. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll yeah. catch up with yeah, you soon. Cheers, man. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. What -bye. a lovely bloke. Well, the man said bringing textures and my first step was to sort of try to define where dirt or ground was and for this i'm going to be using an old favorite coconut fiber from ikea which i glue down with some white glue and then i seal it with some diluted white glue and ipa alcohol now textures can come in many shapes and sizes and for me I felt like this place had such a dark history in my mind so I printed out a whole bunch of skulls and I also used some of my Green Stuff World skulls. In total I think honestly I am well over 200 different skulls on this project. I will count them and get back to you once uh, I've recovered from this project. <laughs> Now, the next step was really to start thinking about vegetation. And again, an old favorite of mine is to use some PVA glue and some foam flock just to create a paste and then add that to the piece. Now, I wanted a crystal, so I started modeling one in Blender. And you can actually download this in the description down below for free. But the next step was really to start thinking about how I could have the crystal suspended in midair. 
My choice was to use some steel wire and magnets because I knew that I wanted the crystal to be removable. And the way I did it was to basically have magnets on the crystal and to have magnets on some steel wires on both ends. That way I could create an HD Wells War of the Worlds looking uh, constellation. After which I will paint up the wires and the actual holder crystals, add some screws to the terrain piece, and you'll see that it's actually surprisingly durable. We're going to see the end result soon, but first I want to extend a thanks to my patrons for the support over the past weeks. And as always, a special shout out goes to my champion and legend level patrons. For the XP, Mad Nurse, Magnus Solberg, Rosen Graveyard, Leander, and Niklas Swedenlind. Thank you so much. You are amazing.